the first shot, hit me in the face, and then went down into my throat, and that's what caused all the, the major damage to my throat. I got shot in the back of the head. I have a bullet stuck in my skull. I got shot in my right arm once, left arm three times, my right hand once, my left hand two times, my right leg once, and my left leg, I think, twice, once or twice. I forget. You sound ridiculous when you say after a while, you can only count so many holes, you know. Take me through this day that you can even remember. You may not even remember much. Oh, I remember almost everything. Um, you're right, it was a normal day. I got up, came to work, and it was a beautiful Sunday morning, you know, the kind that you, you hope for. It was a very low-key Sunday morning. There weren't a lot of calls for service until, the, obviously, when the, the call came in. A uh, call came in that there's possible shots at the Sikh temple. As when I pulled up and I turned, I got out of the car and I saw that there were two individuals. And that's, I, it was apparent to me that the person who was on top was deceased. At that point, I just took maybe one, two steps to go back to the vehicle when I saw someone come out of the temple running. And as soon as I looked over, it was obvious to see that this more than likely had to be the guy just by his dress and the fact that he had a holster on his hip, kind of to give away. Um, so at that point, I, I drew down on him and told him, police, I identified myself and told him to stop. He shot, I shot. Probably, I don't know, he, I want to say maybe 30 yards away from me. And that's when he hit me in the face. I didn't know if I hit him or not. So that's when I went for cover. And standing out in the open when someone's shooting you, which isn't the brightest idea. So I ran for cover which is what we, we trained to do. So I had dove by a car, and then when I had come up to see where, where he was, he had actually come around and was to my rear. And his next shot hit my thumb. I would love to tell you some uh, religious aspect, but my initial thought was that's gonna leave a mark. Another shot hit, and it said probably at that point that I dropped my gun. The shots continue, I went down. He kept, he continued to shoot and he walked around and I could see him. He had hit me at that point in the upper arms. And as, once I got under the car, he had uh, stopped to reload. That's probably the first time that I thought where I am now is kind of cozy. It's uh, got quiet and it got very warm and it was quiet. So I kind of drifted for a second and then I just realized and I'm not going out like this. I am not going out in a parking lot. So I thought to myself, if I can get back towards the truck, towards my squad, I can at least try and get the shotgun out of the car. Do you remember him saying? We didn't talk. There was no conversation whatsoever. It was very businesslike. Is probably the best I could put it. He didn't look enraged. He didn't look uh, anything other than very comfortable in what he was doing. When he was coming out of the temple, he looked. Uh, he actually looked shocked when he first saw me. And then it was back to business. He had his gun out already, 
And that's what his purpose was. I guess I looked and I kept expecting an expression of some sort, but it wasn't, it was very deadpan. So I thought to myself, if I can get back towards my squad, I can at least try and get the shotgun out of the car. So I just stayed on the ground, started going that way. And that's when he had shot me in the back of the head, shot in the back of the arm, shot in the other leg. And at this point, I had actually thought, when is enough enough? I mean, you you had hit me, and it would have had to have been apparent to him that he hit me that many times. And I, that's all I thought to myself is, oh, come on now, that's enough. I couldn't get to my radio. My hand was bad, and I knew my my thumb and my left hand was not going to help me much. And then I heard other shots, and I knew one of them, one of my guys was shooting at him. That's when people came, and I was like, get, let's get inside, get people inside. So they took me back to the car at that point. I was explaining to them, I thought it was just one shooter. I gave them a description, and then they called for an ambulance. So then they grabbed me back out of the the truck and took me to the ambulance. And that the only thing that I specifically asked the fireman for was when we get to the hospital, just ask them if they can give me some for pain. Um, but other than that, I tried to uh, remain as calm and as positive as possible. How much pain were you in? It was, it was excruciating. Oh yeah, it's. They all felt like getting hit with a sledgehammer. The one that hit me in the face, the initial one was, you know, head snap back. And then you're just like, you're, you're just thinking to yourself, how that every description I've ever heard of everybody, anybody getting shot is exactly right. It feels like a super punch. You know, most people would think from under five yards away that he should kill you, that why didn't he? What, what? I, I wish, would you ask that question? Why didn't he kill me? You know, this part of me that says this. I didn't give him anything back. I didn't make a noise. I didn't yell in pain. I'm not giving you anything. And while I might be very self-serving and very egotistical, I wonder if there was not some part of him that thought, I just don't want to get too close because he's not stopping. No matter how much I shoot him, he's not stopping. I can make the argument, he shot me in the head. How much more do you want? You know, unless he puts one directly between my eyes. But I did question at some point why if his specific thing was to kill me. Why didn't he just walk in there right over my head and execute me? Which I'm like yourself and I'm sure a lot of other people think, why are you just standing there? At one point, I'm under the car. My wife and I had tickets to go to the Florida Keys and I thought under the car, oh boy, Ann's gonna be mad that we're not going on vacation. And I think that was one of the things that, again, it's training, it's your mindset, it's who you are. And I'm not leaving anybody behind before I can, ever. Be it a fellow worker or a family member or those people in the temple. Once you know two people are killed, you know there's more. You know it. And you know if you don't do something, it's gonna be a lot more. As you got to the hospital, were you, do you even remember going into the surgery? Or? No, I don't remember going into surgery. I remember getting into the hospital. My wife, the department, notified her very quickly and brought her to the hospital. And she told me that she saw me on the way to surgery and that I had smiled and winked at her. And I was in surgery for over 12 hours. I knew I was going to be okay, though. 
because I saw my wife's face. And when I looked up and I could just see the relief on her face. And then I knew I'm, I'm gonna be okay. I don't feel bad, I feel grateful. Uh, I feel grateful that I'm able to sit and talk to you. It's less than three months and I'm walking around and I'm talking for lack of a better term than how I communicate, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, things could have been so much worse. That first shot actually ripped apart my larynx and bounced off my spinal column. You know, by all accounts, I should have been at least paralyzed at that point. Uh, but I'm not, so I'm happy. It's good, actually, in light of everything that's happened. I know things could be so much worse, so um, I'm actually happy with the progress I'm making, and I'm very fortunate to have as much backing as I've had from the department, from the city, for sure, from the Sikh community, which has just been so unbelievably generous and not only, just overall, they have done nothing but been positive. Uh, all three combined, as well as obviously my family has been extremely supportive during the whole thing.